Good morning. This is the next in my series of little conversations with friends and textilers, makers, creators. And I am really, really pleased to have a chat this morning with Nigel Cheney. Hello, welcome. Good morning, Jill. How are you? I'm really well. How are you? That's the crucial thing. What have you been doing lately? I know it's such a strange time. What have you been doing to keep keep your mind together and keep your keep your soul content yeah well i think it's it's a multi-layered um answer to that one i think um i'm very lucky that i live at home with my family so those i'm closest to are right here so mm -hmm. having lived for 25 years in ireland away from my family I know that the worry I would have had by not being with them would have been astronomical. So by being with them, as much as we get grumpy and moan and chat at each other like everybody does, um, that is the bit that kind of holds it together, all the glue. And then, yes, it seems to be that there are times when you're really energized and want to do things and times where it's just overwhelming and you can't do anything. And I suppose I'm, I'm really conscious that um, lots of textile artists have amazing studios and lovely, you know, spaces they can go to and get away. And I had that when I was in Ireland, but when I came home, we're all in this little bungalow together and everything is in negotiation. So I'm in the conservatory today, which is, is my preferred studio, but is not always that suitable with the weather with no heating and too hot in the summer too cold in the winter so there's a period of time when it's good um, but it's also it does isolate me from the rest of the family and sometimes that's that's really difficult for them um, they don't get that you know i can't i'm literally holding eight things together at the same time and they can't you know i can't actually just just drop it and go and do things but they're in, they're incredibly supportive and it's very good so they're used to me taking over all the surfaces everywhere so the whole house is mine, I just leak everywhere. But there isn't just this beautiful little photogenic space that you go to and see. And I think it's it's really nice for me to be able to say to other people that I can still make really big things and make a lot of things without that dedicated space. So it's not it's not a barrier to me, it's just another challenge in how you do it. And it's, it's, it's very positive yeah. that you can show people that, yeah, because yeah. all that, that people see um, is what's in this this screen just at the moment. Yeah. And you and I both know that I moved this picture behind me <laughs> five minutes before I started recording. It's all about what, yeah. Yeah. what the viewer, what, what the creator decides to put in that square. Yeah. And I mean, that's the luxury of having exhibitions because then it's mm. so considered and so edited and all the gubbins is taken away and it's just, just that final thing. Um, but we both know that making it isn't isn't that smooth linear process to get us like that. Not, it's not necessarily so pretty, the route to making something. Yeah. Or even yeah. five minutes before the exhibition opened, you <laughs> might change the picture and move to the and <laughs> got rid of something that you weren't quite happy with. What's quite interesting, it strikes me then, what's quite interesting is that this, uh, this current situation, as hideous as it is, um, has brought about maybe a reality or, or illustrated a reality of how we all work and how we all exist. And um, maybe that's one of the silver linings. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm created a, creating a piece at the moment that I've called Silver Lining um, because it's, I've got a little bit more time now to supposedly a bit more time to make it. Yeah. And um, indulgent time in my, in my studio um but maybe that's another silver lining that um you know we do get to really show every aspect of ourselves and show the reality of um what we can do as makers and how you know one of the great things is we're really adaptable aren't we i mean look at look at you now you're still you're still working no matter what yeah. what is that piece you're working on well, this is um, basically 
since it's all happened, I think what's really thrown me are the lack of deadlines. I'm mm. so used to working towards something and everything I was working towards with is postponed, cancelled, not happening, don't want to do it anymore. So uh, there are things I've started, I've finished. And there's also a loft full of started projects. Like everyone, I think they will identify that it wasn't quite going where you were. You cut your losses, you didn't throw it away. It's up there kind of fermenting away. So I've been able to finish things. So like the suitcase of money, like um, I'd, I'd done a project on money years and years ago and I'd printed all of these banknotes and they were all kind of cut out and started. And I knew I wanted like this suitcase of cash but I'd never actually finished it. And it got to a point where I just didn't know where to go with it. Yeah. And it sat the loft almost forgetting about it. And there was always something else that was more important. So it was good to, to kind of get onto those things. As much as being isolated and self-isolating and isolating with the family is, is a real change, in some ways as a maker, going into that isolated space is something very, very familiar with, very prepared for of, you know, even with the family going on around me, I'm, you know, somewhere zoned out, sewing away, it, it's, it, I'm used to that. But in some ways, actually, I've connected more to other people during this. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a different aspect because, I mean, we would have met, you know, only in formal occasions at trade fairs and things, so it's lovely to see inside your home and your lovely family, and, you know, all of that thing is really great, and that, to me, makes appreciating your work much richer you know much more interesting um and also i'm when i moved back home to england from ireland i joined the local embroidery guild group mm -hmm. well I, they were there and i something i'd always meant to do and you, you know I, I went to the odd lecture that coincided with when i was at home if i had an interesting talk or as a guest but i thought no i should should join this and i've met really lovely people it's a grassroots thing isn't it the local embroidery it's, guild it's, it's, it's kind of where it all happens yeah, and I, it's not about, you know, a pretentious arty thing or how talented somebody is. It's just people have an absolute joy of just sewing. And I always learn from anybody and everything. So that is wonderful. And what's re one of the things that's really nice about our group is that they um, do this travelling sketchbook. About, you know, 15 or so of the members agree to do it. And you all start a little sketchbook on your own theme. And then each month you pass them around so you get to do all of them at the end of the day so they're themes that i would never have chosen to do myself and, really, really <laughs> lovely. and seeing what other people do and in the different takes and how much great so that's that's odd because i don't have the book so we're just being emailed and shown you know this is the next theme you would do so the first theme i would have had in lockdown was bauhaus so i couldn't add to the sketchbook so i made a little bag to put in the sketchbook and I, mine's a play on Bauhaus the pop group with a photograph of an old cassette and then right. all of these you know researching and looking there so the books are about 20 centimeters square so I got carried away and kind of made a scarfy thing with all these different bits on it so that monthly spurring on of a completely different project and different idea is really nice um, I've got Fabergé eggs at the moment, which is not what I would choose to do, but I've done a very blingy something that I'm not going to show you. But I've, you know... Does that, does that, obviously it's an incredible challenge. I, I don't think I ever work from other themes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be mortified. <laughs> <laughs> but has, has, it brought, has it put new things into your other work, your main work? I, th I think it has. I think it does. I mean, it's, I suppose it's because I've come from such a background of teaching for so long. I was a full-time lecturer for, for 20 years, a long time. Um, what I loved was that I could get excited about somebody else's project and theme that I would never want to do and never have interest in personally, but I could be really invested in what they were doing yeah. um, and have ideas and contribute and to that and so just being me and what I do is a lovely luxury and I'm not taking away from that but it is different yeah um, so just that that forcing yourself to maybe tackle themes that you wouldn't particularly like and you know and part of me is like it's it's only a piece you know it's yeah. you can do some pages of the sketchbook you do a little piece that you do my main challenge is being so small 
um, trying to get it into 20 centimeters, it's, it's like, it grows like topsy. So it's, it's, um, it's uh, that's a hard one. So the piece you're working on at the moment, do you want to tell us about that? That looks huge. Yes. So what, what this is, is that this is the scraps of everything that, you know, there are bags and bags at the loft of bits of printing that went wrong, bits that were cut off. So if I'd have made something like this, in the, in the process of printing it, there would have been, I don't know if you can see it, there would have been more fabric. Yeah. But the bit that's trimmed off, it's it's about not just throwing it away. So it's always somewhere in a bag. Um, and then you tidy and the bag gets a bit tired and <laughs> heater and found with other things. But this was just something like, well, I love all of these bits and I didn't want to do something as formal as one of the, maybe the, you know, the placed, you know, very deliberate drawn compositions. Yeah. So just wanted to just be random and patches and pieces and just, it is a security blanket. Mm. It is a nice thing that I don't feel any pressure I've got to finish it. Yeah. But yeah. I get, if I need to sew, and sometimes sewing helps me kind of distill, think, calm down, mm -hmm. um, put up with awful stuff on the telly everybody else wants to watch. So it's just a way of doing it. And I, it's nice that normally I'd be so tied into a deadline that I would know I must stitch this much today. Because, you know, I, I adore drawing and it figures and so heavily. Yeah. It figures so heavily in my work. Tell me how drawing features for you and, and the importance of drawing in your work. Well, drawing is always a starting point. You know, I've, I've kind of, I've read something, or I've looked something, or I've seen something, there's something I want to capture. And that challenge of trying to create it through different media onto paper is a, is a starting point, but then I'm dissatisfied and I want to take it into cloth. Mm. I suppose it's, it's, I've ended up kind of making two types of work. So one is, is very drawn image based. And then the other tends to be, um, again, working with found things, fragments, uh, kind of old bits and stuff. And I like that kind of collage making layering. And I, I have an audience, some who like more abstract things and, and pattern and some who like more figurative. So it's it's kind of both irons in the fire, both kind of, they satisfy different parts of me. Like, yeah. like you know, roast dinner and ice cream, you know, it's yeah. different bits, not necessarily together at the same time, but you know, one after the other's really nice. Yeah, I um, think something about get, getting up on a different, from a different side of the bed. Have you got any exhibitions planned at the moment? Have you got anything that's kind of loosely in the well, With the 62 group, there was an exhibition that's postponed. So that piece of work is made and in a plastic box, read, literally ready to go to the post office. And the gallery say they're keen to show, but there's no even indication of a deadline. I have, um, with our local embroideries guild, it's their 21st anniversary this year, and we should have been having the exhibition literally this weekend coming. Okay. Um, so there was be work for that. Now, in theory, that's been postponed to September, but I don't know if I believe it. Nigel, thank you very, very much for spending some time to talk to me this morning. I know you had to do a lot of rearranging of schedules and, and layout and things like that to bring everything into the conservatory. So I'm really, really appreciative Thank you so much, and I know that people are going to love listening. Yeah, <laughs> it's lovely to talk to you. Take care, then. And you. And you.